something exciting came in the mail today, the 101 Hero. And tonight I'm gonna unbox it and just show you exactly what's inside. You know what time it is. So finally, months after the Kickstarter had finished, the 3D printer known as the world's cheapest 3D printer has been shipped out and I've managed to get mine in the mail. If you'd like to see a more comprehensive review and actually going over other details, then check out Angus's channel, Maker's Muse, which you can find up here. But for now, let's see what's inside. Okay. So the first part looks like the top and the bottom and the build plate, which is a cylindrical piece of glass or a circular, I should say, not cylindrical. So throw those to the side. There's the piece of glass there. Let's pull it out. Just for protection while I'm unboxing, I'll put that back in because you never know what will happen. Throw that one over there. Okay, so a couple of bits of filament. And the instruction manual. Looks like we've got the screws, clips and some tape. It's the power supply and it's Australian, which is great. Okay, here's the actual control unit itself. There we go. And there's the SD card reader. So I'll place those there. Okay, this bit here is the extruder assembly. Very nice and tidy. Very nice. I'll throw that there. And lastly, it looks like we've got the three pieces, or the three pylons, I should say, for the actual 3D printer itself. So if I open up one of the pylons, throw that over there. We can see there's the arms. We've got wiring there, one for the stopper switch, one for the motor. And feels nice and tight, which is good. Second one looks good. And the third one looks good. Great. Okay, so these are all the bits and now putting it together should be fairly simple. So what I'll do now, just to expand upon this unboxing a little bit, is I'm gonna put it together and actually see if it does take five minutes or not. I've got a feeling I think it's gonna take a little bit longer than five minutes, but let's see. So I've got some zip ties in there as well. Got an Allen key. Got three bulldog clips. Four of the little wide zip ties. The tape for the bed. And screws for the unit itself. All right, so the stopper switches or limit switches all are supposed to be up the top. So that's a good indication there. Now at this point, they're both exactly the same. So I don't think it matters which one you actually use. So what I'm doing is I'm just pulling up the wires there just to make sure that the limit switch wires don't come in contact. All 
Now the only thing that I can't see here is any sort of instructions saying what the difference in the screws are. So for a beginner, there might be some confusion there, but I can see here, these are the M4 12, and it does say that there are 12 screws there. So I'm guessing they're working under the assumption that you can see there that it says it needs 12 screws in total, so. First problem, I didn't read far enough. Right down in there is a very small groove for cables to go through. This is why you should read instructions. That's better. Okay. That looks a lot tidier too. What is the temperature right now? It's 26 degrees right now. It is very hot right now. It's an Australian summer and today has been extremely hot and I'm sweating. So it's actually night time right now. It is eight o'clock at night and it's 26 degrees Celsius. So you can imagine how hot it is. But I will push through. Now even just working with this right now, I can see how flimsy it actually is. Like it, it's gonna need something to stabilize it to do really good prints. It, it should be fine, but it's just a word of, word of warning, I should say, that it does feel a little bit flimsy. The plastic is really strong because it's injected, inject, injected, injection molded. The plastic is really strong because it's injection molded, however, it still overall films a, feels a little bit flimsy compared to other 3D printers, so I'll keep going. All right, so let's put on this top. Make sure the limit switch wires are in the little groove up there. Okay, so there is the base all put together. And as you can see there, it definitely has some stability issues. So we'll have to see how this actually works when it is up and running and moving. All right, let's jump onto the extruder now and we'll install that right after I read some instructions. Okay, so the gold screws are for the arms. I'm just gonna place them through each one of the arms just so I know where they are. Now the extruder itself attaches to the arms at the bottom there.
Okay, so that's the extruder attached to the arms. And the last bit is to hook up the actual control unit itself. So I'm just gonna have a look at the SD card reader. Now on the back here, there's some foam and that's where the connection points are. And because I don't want to hook it up wrong, I'm just going to read, there we go. So it does protrude. I don't actually see why they couldn't have placed the SD card reader inside. Looks like there's plenty of room in there from what I can see. So it's sort of a little bit of a design fault really. This is the developer unit as well. So it's actually got the USB port right there. Now there is also, I'll show you a close up of this, but there is also a sequence to hook these up in. So on the cables themselves is the letter that it corresponds to. So make sure you match them up properly. Otherwise this won't work properly. And I've thrown that, so let me just get that. So that's all the limit switches and the motors hooked up. And now I'm just going to feed the extruder wires through the top. Now to keep it tidier as well, what I've done is I've fed all the wires through to one side just to keep it a little bit tidier. But what you can also do, instead of using the zip ties they provide, is using Velcro cable ties. So this will help keep all those wires together and tidy as well. There we go, so that's a little bit tidier there inside now. So the last bit is the actual plate itself. So I'm not gonna apply any tape to it just yet, but what I'll do is I'll put it there. I've never liked the idea of bull clips purely because of chipped glass. Well, that looks like it. Got the power supply there. I'll turn this around so you can see it. I'm gonna tidy up the cables a little bit more just to make it a little bit more friendlier. But that there is the 101 Hero constructed and unboxed all in one video. Well, I really hope you liked it. If you did, make sure you give me a big thumbs up or even leave me a comment down below. If you do enjoy the content that I'm providing, then make sure you leave, then make sure, uh, it is so hot. Then make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that little bell as well, because that'll notify you of new videos. And as always, imagine, learn, create. That's the end of the video and it is so hot right now. I'm sweating so much. I am done for the night. I think it's about nine o'clock at night now. I'm gonna have a look at this another time, but I really hope you enjoyed the unboxing. Um, like I said, there's, a, there's a, a few things that I wouldn't mind doing to this just to give it a little bit more stability, clean up the cabling and so forth. Um, but yeah, apart from that, this looks like a really great little machine. Um, it'll only be used for the little parts and all that sort of thing because it doesn't have a very big build volume, but it's, uh, it's still gonna be a good little machine. If you wanna grab one for yourself, I think they're taking pre-orders at the moment. So I'll leave a link down in the description for their website. I'm in no way affiliated with them. I just kickstarted this, same as Angus when he first started. So if, um, yeah, if you do like it, then check them out.